Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 35. Christ, whose glory fills the skies, Christ the true, the perfect light, Son of righteousness, arise, triumph o'er the shades of night. Day spring from on high, be near, day star in my heart appear. Hymn number 35.
The scriptural will be given by Betty from California. Isaiah 40. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Hebrews 7. For he testifieth that thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. Romans 8. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We will now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 349. Thy will, Almighty Father, 
thine and thine alone be ever done. For thou art life and truth and love, the great eternal Holy One. Hymn number 349. Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin each Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion, which we just finished, and it was a real good one. So if you missed it, please log on to our website, plainfieldcs.com, and check it out. Also on Sundays at 11 a.m., we have a Sunday school for children, which is carried on through a teleconference number that we provide so that any child anywhere in the world can participate in our Sunday school. So if you don't live in the area and you have a child who would like to attend Sunday school, please call us and your child will be most welcome. Every Wednesday evening at 8.15, we have a testimony meeting where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives changed through the study and practice of Christian science. And for all of our services, we have a nursery available for infants and toddlers. You can find us not only here in Plainfield, New Jersey, but also on our website, plainfieldcs.com. We have a channel on YouTube, and you can also find us on SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can listen to all of our services, either on our website, on YouTube, or from your telephone via a teleconference number that we provide. One of the things I would like to point out on our website is an article that was recently put there entitled Church by Martha Wilcox. So if you've ever wondered why we have a church and, and what our responsibility is, it's a really good article. I would recommend it highly. Next Saturday, we will have another Bible study session. So check the website for study questions. 
And please join us. That's next Saturday at 10 a.m. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are visiting or listening or participating from around the world. Now we will have the reading of a testimony from the chapter entitled Fruitage in Science and Health, which attests to the healing power obtained from studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Lil from New Jersey. Page 675, many physical and mental troubles overcome. <clears throat> Less than a year ago, when nothing but trouble seemed to encompass me, I was led to Christian science. <clears throat> My mother's copy of Science and Health was always lying on the table, but I scarcely ever read it. One day, however, the mental conflict was so great, I commenced reading in the hope of obtaining peace. Every day since then, my companions have been the Bible and science and health. At that time, I had a very serious eruption on my face, which had been there two years. We had consulted several physicians and used every remedy suggested to eradicate it, but they proved useless. I had given up all hopes of its ever being healed as the physician we last consulted pronounced it tuberculosis of the skin and incurable. A few weeks after I commenced reading, I was amazed to see it almost healed over, and today my cheek is perfectly smooth while the scar is disappearing. In April, my baby was born with only the practitioner and a woman friend present. I suffered little pain, and the third day I went downstairs. I am able to nurse him, a privilege of which I was deprived with my first child. He is a picture of health having never been sick a day since he was born. K-E-W-L, Mount Dora, Florida. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 14 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Mortals and Immortals. The golden text is from Psalms. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The responsive reading, 1 Peter. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy, in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervently. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. 
for all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Fairly from Maryland will read from the Bible. The Holy Bible. Isaiah. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Job, if thou prepare thine heart and stretch out thine hands toward him, then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot. Yea, thou shalt be steadfast and shalt not fear, because thou shalt forget thy misery and remember it as waters that pass away. And thine age shall be clearer than the noonday. Thou shalt shine forth. Thou shalt be as the morning. Exodus. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering. And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother, for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goeth in before the Lord. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it, like the engravings of a signet. Holiness to the Lord. Hebrews. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. And no man taketh this honor unto himself but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, 
And after that also, king of Salem, which is king of peace. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. Ephesians. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. 1 Corinthians. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory, Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I will now read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. Science reveals the glorious possibilities of immortal man, forever unlimited by the mortal senses. Man 
in the likeness of his maker, reflects the central light of being, the invisible God. As there is no corporeality in the mirrored form, which is but a reflection, so man, like all things real, reflects God, his divine principle, not in a mortal body. Immortality, exempt from age or decay, has a glory of its own, the radiance of soul. Immortal men and women are models of spiritual sense, drawn by perfect mind and reflecting those higher conceptions of loveliness which transcend all material sense. God expresses in man the infinite idea, forever developing itself, broadening and rising higher and higher from a boundless basis. Mind manifests all that exists in the infinitude of truth. We know no more of man as the true divine image and likeness than we know of God. The infinite principle is reflected by the infinite idea and spiritual individuality. But the material so-called senses have no cognizance of either principle or its idea. The human capacities are enlarged and perfected in proportion as humanity gains the true conception of man and God. Mortals have a very imperfect sense of the spiritual man and of the infinite range of his thought. To him belongs eternal life. Never born and never dying, it were impossible for man, under the government of God in eternal science, to fall from his high estate. Through spiritual sense, you can discern the heart of divinity and thus begin to comprehend in science the generic term man. Man is not absorbed in deity, and man cannot lose his individuality, for he reflects eternal life. Nor is he an isolated, solitary idea, for he represents infinite mind, the sum of all substance. In divine science, Man is the true image of God. The divine nature was best expressed in Christ Jesus, who threw upon mortals the truer reflection of God and lifted their lives higher than their poor thought models would allow, thoughts which presented man as fallen, sick, sinning, and dying. The Christ-like understanding of scientific being and divine healing includes a perfect principle and idea, perfect God and perfect man, as the basis of thought and demonstration. Thummim, perfection, the eternal demand of divine science. The Urim and Thummim, which were to be on Aaron's breast when he went before Jehovah, were holiness and purification of thought and deed. The rabbins believed that the stones in the breastplate of the high priest had supernatural illumination. But Christian science reveals spirit not matter, 
as the illuminator of all. The illuminations of science give us a sense of the nothingness of error, and they show the spiritual inspiration of love and truth to be the only fit preparation for admission to the presence and power of the Most High. Progress is born of experience. It is the ripening of mortal man through which the mortal is dropped for the immortal. Either here or hereafter, suffering or science must destroy all illusions regarding life and mind and regenerate material sense and self. The old man with his deeds must be put off. Nothing sensual or sinful is immortal. The so-called pleasures and pains of matter perish, and they must go out under the blaze of truth, spiritual sense, and the actuality of being. Mortal belief must lose all satisfaction in error and sin in order to part with them. Mortals must change their ideals in order to improve their models. A sick body is evolved from sick thoughts. Selfishness and sensualism are educated in mortal mind by the thoughts ever recurring to one's self, by conversation about the body, and by the expectation of perpetual pleasure or pain from it. And this education is at the expense of spiritual growth. If we array thought in mortal vestures, it must lose its immortal nature. If we look to the body for pleasure, we find pain. For life, we find death. For truth, we find error. For spirit, we find its opposite, matter. Now reverse this action. Look away from the body into truth and love the principle of all happiness, harmony, and immortality. Hold thought steadfastly to the enduring, the good, and the true, and you will find these, and you will bring these into your experience proportionably to their occupancy of your thoughts. Willingness to become as a little child and to leave the old for the new, renders thought receptive of the advanced idea. Gladness to leave the false landmarks and joy to see them disappear. This disposition helps to precipitate the ultimate harmony. The purification of sense and self is a proof of progress. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Mortals will disappear, and immortals, or the children of God, will appear as the only and eternal verities of man. Learn this, O mortal, and earnestly seek the spiritual status of man which is outside of all material selfhood. When speaking of God's children, not the children of men, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. That is, truth and love reign in the real man, showing that man in God's image 
is unfallen and eternal. Jesus beheld in science the perfect man who appeared to him where sinning mortal man appears to mortals. In this perfect man, the Savior saw God's own likeness, and this correct view of man healed the sick. Thus, Jesus taught that the kingdom of God is intact, universal, and that man is pure and holy. Man is not a material habitation for soul. He is himself spiritual. Mortals can never know the infinite until they throw off the old man and reach the spiritual image and likeness. What can fathom infinity? How shall we declare him till, in the language of the apostle, we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ? We will now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 422. <clears throat> Grace for today, O love divine, thee to obey and love alone. Losing the mortal will in thine find we a joy before unknown. Hymn number 422.
and God alone created all these things we call our own. From the mighty to the small, the glory in them all is God's and God's alone. God and God alone reveals the truth of all we call unknown. And all the best and worst of man won't change the master's plan. It's God and God alone. God and God alone is fit to take Let's now sing hymn number 34. Christ comes again with holy power to lift our blinded eyes to see. The sick are healed, the sinner blessed, as on that eve in Galilee. Hymn number 34.
I will read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passages from 1 John, 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. The salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them, because they trust in him. Amen. Amen. 